The Hancock Inspirator Company made all types of steam-related devices for locomotives since the beginning of the steam era. From cab fittings to injectors, they were a one-stop shop for most of the needed equipment for a modern steam locomotive. But one of their most sought-after appurtenances were their whistles. Their whistles became the voice of some of the greatest locomotives ever built. The Southern Pacific's Daylight, the Norfolk and Western 611, and the Union Pacific's Big Boy. The deep, rich sound powered by the high-pressure steam is what made those engines sound so truly memorable. At the end of the steam era, the Hancock Company was making the transition to the first-generation diesels. They offered a wide range of parts for modern diesel locomotives, but among their offerings was a part designed to compete with the new sounding devices of the time. Something that would bring you back to the steam era and take the edge off the harsh air horns of the day. It was known as the Hancock 4700 Air Whistle. In 1953, recognizing the end of the steam era was near, Lewis Burroughs designed and started the patent process for a new air whistle for the Hancock Company. The patent was granted in 1957 and sales began that same year. Burroughs took the most recognizable sounds from steam whistles and tried to reproduce them with air in a smaller, more efficient design for the modern diesel locomotive. He chose E, A, and C sharp as the notes he thought would give the most pleasing sound to the ear and still have that steam sound. A few Eastern Railroads were Hancock loyalists and used their whistles exclusively on their new diesel rosters. Although in operation, the whistles failed to perform as desired. They were hard to hear at speed and the sound didn't carry as far as they predicted. In fact, most of the whistles were removed from Class 1 service within the first few years of their introduction. So fast forward 54 years. The Virginia and Truckee Railroad was looking for a more pleasing sound for their diesel locomotive, a GE 80 tonner. A recommendation from another railroad would lead them to acquire a now historic Hancock 4700 air whistle for their passenger service, with the thought that it would be better for the surrounding neighbors than the air horn they had been using. When it arrived, it was put into service for several years on their D1 diesel. It was less than a great sound, but it was better than the air horn. Then, last summer when we were visiting the V&T, I heard the sound that could only be described as a cross between a six-steam engine and the Tunerville trolley. It really wasn't a pleasing railroad sound, but it was typical of the Hancock 4700s. I talked with Tom Gray, the owner of the Virginia and Truckee, and asked if we might try to improve the sound of the whistle for him. He agreed and plans were made to remove the whistle and get it down to our shop. Since the basics of the Hancock 4700 are the same as a steam whistle, we thought we could change the sound to a more pleasing tone and maybe improve on the design a little bit while we were at it. Since the Hancock 4700 is now a highly collectible railroad artifact, our first priority was to design a project that would not alter or destroy anything from the original whistle. All the changes we would make were made totally on a new bell and center support. The first step of the project, once we got the whistle back to the shop, was to disassemble it, clean it, and make careful measurements of the entire piece. After deciding how we would remanufacture the bell, I did some math and came up with the chamber lengths that we would use to produce the new chord of E, G, and B, rather than E, A, and C sharp. My father set to work machining the brass center supports, vanes, and stops that make up the bell. This replaces the original aluminum casting. Brass was chosen so we could create a warmer sound and it would be a better material to fabricate all the miscellaneous parts that were needed. Once all the pieces were machined and soldered together, it was turned to size and then a 4-inch tube was pressed over the entire assembly. A test was performed before any more work was done to make sure the sound was in tune and the whistle was playing the notes that we had predicted. After the test, I sandblasted the brass and immediately painted it black with a high-solids polyurethane coating. Once the coating was cured, 
I had the bell laser engraved with our name and a new model number of 4735. A clear cut was applied of the same type of high solids polyurethane coating to protect the finish. A little final assembly. And the finished product was ready to be picked up by the owner of the Virginia and Truckee Railroad. They now have the only Hancock air whistle that's ever been modified and put into revenue service. We can't thank the good people of the V&T enough for all of their support and encouragement with this project. So the next time you visit the Virginia and Truckee Railroad, take a listen and let me know how we did.